Hello everyone, this is Donnie Gladfelter from the CAD Geek once again. So it seems many of you have had the chance to watch the video I recorded at the AutoCAD 2011 product launch event out in San Francisco about 3D surfaces last week. And while that video highlighted more than just 3D surfaces, I'd like to continue my coverage about AutoCAD 2011 today by discussing some of the hatching and transparency enhancements that we find inside of it. And so there's a lot to talk about here, and so rather than wasting time with intro and so forth, let's just jump into things. And so the way I'm going to do that is, of course, by coming up here to the Home tab under the Draw panel, picking the Hatch command right here. Now one of the first things that you'll notice when I launch the Hatch command is that I no longer get that big dialog box where I had to tell it, do I want to pick points, do I want to select objects, what pattern do I want, maybe do a preview, all before I could just say OK to the Hatch and create it inside of my drawing. Instead, inside of AutoCAD 2011, we get this contextual hatch creation tab, and it houses all of the same settings that I used to find on that old dialog box, but gives me a couple of additional little tips and tricks that we can kind of use to create our hatches in a more efficient way. So one of my favorite things is the dynamic preview. Notice what happens when I just hover over this closed area, again, my hatch region that I want to hatch. AutoCAD dynamically and just automatically creates a preview very quickly for me. It doesn't really slow down the system, even with large areas. I've tested it with all sorts of things here. And again, I pick the internal point, or actually I don't really pick the internal point, I just kind of hover over it, and it dynamically creates that hatch for me. So maybe I don't like that hatch pattern, so I'm going to change to something else, and notice that AutoCAD will automatically use whatever pattern I have selected up there in the Hatch Creation tab, and preview it for me just like this. So another kind of thing that happens, I think, pretty frequently among AutoCAD users is, you know, you start up the hatch command, but you forget to set the layer. And so the options that you had then in previous releases was to escape out of the hatch command, go change your layer to whatever layer you wanted the hatch to be created on, re-enter the hatch command, and, you know, kind of start all over, really. Or you could just go ahead and create the hatch, hit OK, use the match properties or whatever to, to change the layer of the hatch after it was created. So if you forget to set the layer inside of AutoCAD 2011, you don't have to go through any of that. Instead, you can just come up here to the Properties panel, expand it out, and right here we have a Hatch Layer Override drop-down list that I can choose the layer that I want the hatch to be created on. So in this case, I'm just going to pick this Hatch Layer, and notice what happens to my preview now. AutoCAD knows that, hey, this hatch is going to be created on the Hatch uh, Layer, and so it displays it using that layer property. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to pick inside of this triangle to go ahead and uh, select that as my internal point. Go ahead and hit enter. Of course the hatch command ends, the ribbon tab goes away, and my hatch is inside of my drawing. So something else that I think is really neat. Many people of course know about the MIRR text variable, the mirror text variable. Basically it controls whether or not text gets mirrored or not when I use the AutoCAD mirror command. We haven't had that same you know, kind of golden nugget inside of AutoCAD in previous releases. Instead, if I use the mirror command and I select these objects, I get something like this. And it's basically just a copy of uh, the objects that doesn't mirror the hatch pattern at all. So inside of AutoCAD 2011, we have a new uh, variable called mirror tech or mirror hatch. So it's M I R R hatch. Default value, I think, is zero, but if I set this to one, Watch what happens now if I mirror this triangle with the hatch pattern. Notice how the hatch pattern actually mirrors as well. Kind of a neat little enhancement there. So that's basically kind of a quick run through of the hatch enhancements. Now, I think one of the neatest things are to show transparency with is hatch. So we're gonna go back into the hatch command and what I'm gonna do just for kind of demonstration purposes is change my pattern to solid and over here you'll notice I have a slider for hatch transparency. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to select this guy, select these three boxes like so. Now this is true transparency in the way that if I were to move these guys on top of one another, that you can see them becoming more intense. This is controlled down here with the new drawing mode called show or hide transparency and you can notice what happens when I toggle it on and off. Now, transparency, it can of course be assigned by object, which is what we just did here inside of the uh, hatch object. 
We can also assign it by layer. Basically everything that I can, or just the same as I can assign things um, a color, I can assign a transparency now. You notice I have a transparency property up here as well. And if I were to go into the layer command, I have a transparency slider here. So while object transparency is really neat inside of AutoCAD 2011, just one little word of warning, if I plot a drawing using object transparency, it takes a little bit more horsepower in order to plot that, and the plot will be rasterized as opposed to a vector plot. Typically it won't matter too much to most folks unless of course I'm doing something like creating a, a PDF or a DWF. Again, it's gonna rasterize that transparency, and so I'm gonna lose some of the object snap good, goodies that I have inside of DWFs and PDFs when I use them as underlays inside of my drawing. So anyway, just a very quick look at some of the exciting things that we have inside of hatching and transparency for AutoCAD 2011. Once again, this is Donnie Gladfelter from The CAD Geek. I invite you to visit my blog, www.thecadgeek.com, for many more tips and tricks just like this one. And of course, keep your eye out for my upcoming book, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, No Experience Required. You can look for the 2011 version of it in June of this year. And so... Thanks for visiting and I hope to see you soon.